Okay, I think that we are here. And welcome. I am challenged every single time by the technology. Um, let me see if there are any people in the chat, if I know how to find my way there. In the meantime, while I'm figuring this out, why don't you each take a turn and introduce yourselves? Uh-oh. Yeah, okay, I guess I'll go first. Um, my name is Sarah. Um, I'm known on Ravelry as Jayadea's Threads. Oh, I keep on forgetting to provide you the, the links <laughs> so you can put it in your show notes. Remind me to show it to you, to give it to you later so you can add it to the description afterwards. Um, and my location, booked in New York. <laughs> so me and Billy live in the same state. Same city. Same city even, yeah. <laughs> Okay, somebody else take a turn. I'm still tinkering around here. I'll come up. Hi, my name is George. I'm English, but I now live in New Zealand, the North Island of New Zealand. And my revelry name is Kizzy Crazy. Okay. <laughs> Okay, next. Okay. Hi, my name is Christina. I live in Berlin in Germany, but I'm not German. Um, I'm coming from Bulgaria originally. And um, yes, uh, that is my first online call <laughs> that I, uh, I like very much. I want to excuse my absence on the past two times just to say that I was still knitting behind the scenes. So um, I do have to show you something, I hope. Oh, good. That's okay. I mean, things come up. It's fine. No, I, I watched. I watched the videos, guys. It, it, you don't have to think that I just disconnected. Not at all. It's just that always something different came up, and um, yeah, sometimes it's a little bit challenging for me also all the time because it's a bedtime for my kids, and uh, yeah. But um, tonight I managed. And uh, I didn't realize that you had. <laughs> Three yeah. children, three young ones. What are their ages? Uh, the oldest is eight years old. Then uh, there are actually three boys. The second is six years old, and the youngest is three. That's he was shortly the first. <laughs> I yeah. had one. Okay. I had one boy, and I know how much work that is. Three. I can't even imagine. I I didn't knit for twenty five <laughs> years because I was. Actually, I'm, I'm, one I'm safe with knitting. If I don't knit, I don't know if I can stand it. I'm just <laughs> taking my knitting and hiding just to, <laughs> to before, find peace for a while. <laughs> before the others introduce themselves, let me just say, now that I sort of figured out the technology and I still don't think I got it right, um, I'm Billy. I'm the host of Show and & Tell. And this small group that you're seeing on the screen right now have all been knitting along on the same 1949 Sirdar cardigan. It's got a chevron pattern. We're going to show you our knitting in a minute, but I just wanted to like backtrack and say, that's why we're here. All of us are knitting the same sweater and we come together every two weeks to compare notes. We thought that we were going to be finished by today, but we underestimated how long this little number was going to take us. So, okay. Um, I think Isha, you're the only one who hasn't introduced herself. So go ahead. Huh? You're muted. There you are. Yeah. I hope you can't hear the chainsaw in the background. <laughs> the boyfriend is building a shed. <laughs> um, I, uh, if you tell me if you can hear it and I can mute myself again. Um, yes, uh, cattle and collies on, on Ravelry and um, I'm in England, although I'm Scottish from the north of Scotland. <laughs> ah, okay, and is the puppy there? 
No, he's in his bed. <laughs> yeah, I might I might go and get him later, see, or maybe uh, next time he might make an appearance. It would but he was, very he was very tired. <laughs> I'm very tired. <laughs> Trisha was in here with us last time because she was going to look at the puppy that she was planning to buy, and now he's home with her. What is his name? Oh, we don't have a name for him yet. <laughs> but it's a male? Yes. Yeah. There's a few um, short list, but uh, it's very difficult finding a name. Yeah. So that's it. I don't know. My mother was really good at it. We had a whole bunch of dogs. My mother was a dog groomer for a yeah. certain period of her life. And we had a French poodle. Oh boy, I could probably find pictures around my apartment to show you, but we had an apricot French poodle. That was my very first dog when I was very young. Um, her name was Simone, and then we got a male poodle who was silver. His name was Duan. His formal name on his pedigree was Monsieur Duan Alt. I don't know how she came up with his name. I think it might have been the lineage that he was from, because all of our dogs were pedigreed. And in the United yeah. States, you register your dog with the American Kennel Club, mm. and if they have parents who are champions. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting feedback. I'm not sure why, because I have this paused. I don't have it paused. I should have this paused. Ah. Sorry about that. I don't know why that's happening. I'm so frustrated because I just want this to go smoothly for once. Hmm. Well, I hope it doesn't bother anybody. Um, so yeah, if your dog had champion parents, the names of that bloodline get carried on. Anyway, we had a bunch of dogs. So finding names was not hard for her. Yeah. Maybe if you've got more dogs, it's easier. You've got more chances. Like we never have any problem naming the cows because there's so many of them. But, you know, they only have <laughs> one or two dogs. So, How yeah. many cows do you have? Um, about 120. It's not many. Um, yeah. And they all have names? Yeah, nearly all, yes. But their oh. names like um, Big Ears or Fat Orange or <laughs> they're descriptive names <laughs> usually. <laughs> And can you recognize them? Like oh, yes. Them? Oh, easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're like pets. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's yeah. something yeah. amazing. <laughs> well, okay, before yeah. the time runs away with us, yeah. I just wanted to say, I'll start. Um, I am on my last sleeve. I'm, I'm a good part of the way through, so I'm really excited, but don't be fooled into thinking that I'm almost done the sweater because I still have like ribbing all around to do. That's going to take me, I think, a long time, but I'm just at the point where I switch to the larger needle. Oh my goodness, the difference between a size two and a size three, I feel like I'm holding like a golf club or something like a, a baseball bat or something i mean it feels so big compared to that skinny little two uh, it's a pleasure now but i wanted to put my sweater on i here it is what i've got and i started to assemble it i mean it's part of it is put together for real like the shoulders i did a three needle bind off i had kept both um, the front and the back stitches live. So that's, that's my shoulder. You can't really see a seam. And so that's real. And my side seams are official with what there is of the side. I mean, that's my side so far. There's going to be ribbing here. Um, for those who haven't seen it before, this is my provisional bind on. This red will go away once I knit down my ribbing. But I'm going to slip it on to show you. Um, I'm very, very pleased with the fit. Wow. Yeah. 
So the sleeve is just basted in. Hmm. Yeah, that's good. Wonderful. I think the sleeve is in exactly the right place. There's no extra fabric hanging. I'm happy with the length of it. Um, and I haven't blocked the sleeve and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, and then there's the back. So mm. actually, I mean, it will be like this and I still have the button band to do. So I think I'm gonna be okay in here. Yeah. I'm gonna keep it on. It's a little chilly in my apartment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's go around and like, tell us where you're at. Go I'm, ahead, um, anybody. I'm doing the, the neck band. <gasps> so I've Aww. done the back, the sleeves, the fronts. I've done the two button bands and they're sewn on. And now I've just done the last buttonhole at the top of the um, sweater there. And I'm just doing the neck band. So I will finish that this evening. And then I've got to sew the rest together. Exciting, eh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just, I can't imagine how fast a knitter you must be because I've been knitting on this every single day and I have been strictly monogamous. I have not picked up another project. I've resisted the temptation to cast on. You must be like a machine. Not really. <laughs> I just... <laughs> work at it you know do you do that <laughs> underarm no 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 because that's I, really fast I, my right needle is held like a pencil as if you were writing mm. underneath my left hand is on top of the left hand needle and then i just flick it over wow so you must just put so more I, hours in than i have put in i thought i was knitting a lot this sweater takes a lot of hours. It if anybody's does. considering doing it, I mean, especially because you've done all the ribbing already at the bottom. Yeah. Because you I start also made it. Long. I made the body a bit longer. Oh. Um, but but to be honest, I'm absolutely sick of it. <laughs> I'm pretty I'll sick of it over. too. But I'm trying to. Stay the course. I already have yarn for my next project. My next project is going to yeah. be worsted, big needles, sleeveless, quick. Um, no, I just no, want no. to have that satisfaction. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. Christina, you want to go ahead? Yeah, I'm uh, on the first sleeve. I'm not really sure how it will work. I'm just uh, measuring by doing and trying to um, make up the... Um, increases because uh, I, I would like it to be this length let's say like in the middle between the wrist and elbow um, and um, yes that is a little bit challenging for me I'm with a need to um, much experience three years, and that is my first experiment so I don't really have the experience to be confident and do the modifications anyway I did a lot of modifications, shaping modification in this uh, sweater. So I really hope it will it can turn good. But I, I'm, as I'm using cotton yarn um, for a summer cardigan, I just want to have like, I like shorter sleeves like this, three fourths sleeves. And yeah, I have this romantic idea in my head. I have also chosen these buttons that look like you can see like two flowers and <laughs> I hope it will be good at the end. I don't know. Um, I um, only have to knit the sleeves and the um, uh, neck band. I did the uh, back and fronts. I actually did three fronts because uh, when I finished the second front, I realized that I <laughs> forgot to do the hole on the bottom ribbing, which is sorry mm -hmm. about that. But <laughs> Really frustrated thought. I just bind it off, looked at it, and I said, "Oh my god, <laughs> that is a deep. <laughs> that's a deep breathing. I think I need buttons there." It's like, "Oh." Then I sit it and I tried it to kind of fast to 
come with some revolutionary idea of how can this be adapted? Nothing came up. I just slept over and next day I said, you know what? I will just cast on again the same thing. I don't mind. <laughs> and I, I needed, and that it is the wrong button, um, the wrong front. I didn't unpick it yet, but I will, of course. And I needed a second time. Then it's blocking now with the back. It looks fine on the blocking table. And so, um, yeah, as I go, I get the sleeves um, right, which is being complicated. Having in mind that I'm not really experienced, trust myself, maybe I will have to unravel here and there a little bit. But that if not by the end of next week, may, maybe um, end of first week, second week of June, I will be will be ready. So yeah, let's see. Well, I'm uh, I'm excited. I'm 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 positive. I think that the worst thing that can happen is just to unravel another part and do it again. What what else can be? <laughs> so I guess it's fun. Before we <laughs> before we finish, we probably should talk about if we want to meet again and yeah, how, you know how soon, but. Let's see the other people's work. So you've you've done the two fronts and the back, and now you're doing your first and the back and the button band, uh, button bands. And the because button I bands. wanted to because with the button bands I also had an issue. I'm trying to try to see another version than the one suggested uh, by the partner. Um, but then I ended up with this suggested version. Uh, because I couldn't do it neatly, though I I really liked the the other idea solutions. Okay, I will start from the beginning. I didn't want to have seaming in front because I thought that um, as I may using cotton yarn with lace, um, they're not best friends, obviously. And mm -hmm. um, this seaming can um, maybe uh, keep it too tight. It can influence the blocking stretching of the lace part. And on the, on the other hand, with this cotton yarn can look bulkier from the inner side. So I thought if there is another way to do it together uh, and smoothly, I prefer. And I've asked in uh, one Ravelry group if somebody knew to help me. And actually, um, there were three suggestions, three very, very wise and good suggestions. I uh, tried to do one of them, which would be uh, possible for me because first I already had the live stitches on um, in that direction so I couldn't um, pick up stitches and do it in this having the um, yeah. live stitches there yeah. so <clears throat> I tried their, their suggestion was to actually do the um, the button band the smaller needle uh, as started from the ribbing and connect the button band with the main part with two together as you go yeah mm -hmm. as i go and i thought that it's, it's genius that is so nice but um i couldn't do it. i i did it maybe three four times and just i didn't like it um it was um a little bit like a column of a little bigger stitches than it is then i did on the other front um uh, try the um, standard method uh, suggested also uh, by the pattern and I liked it more despite the seeming from the inner side that nobody sees it yet actually and what I've decided did, to go with that what, how did you attach yours George well the last jersey I did I did it with two little needles at the side and so knitted it at the same side as the size as the body same time as the body simultaneously but yeah. it still seemed to have a little wave in it it wasn't as mm -hmm. um closely fitted as sewing it on so this time I thought well I'll do a sew on one which I've done before and it needs blocking because it's turning at the moment but it has I don't know if you can see it has joined on pretty well yeah yeah. There we are. Yeah. Can you show us the the back of that? Oh, the back is awful at the moment because I haven't pressed it. I haven't done anything to it, but that's the back. Yeah, you so it doesn't to... look bulky. 
Oh no, mm. it's not bulky, yeah. but it just needs a bit of a, you know. <laughs> Did you do you half a stitch on each? No, I didn't. I didn't do it like that because I didn't like the edge. Um, I did it as a very, very tiny back stitch. Back stitch. Oh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which I've done for the shoulder seams as well. So the shoulder seams are there. They've worked pretty well. And I shall do for the rest of the jersey as well. Okay. You had said in another episode that that yeah. was your preferred point. I find, I find it does give it a bit of structure. Because with it being lace, it's quite a floppy cardigan, you know. Uh, the back stitch will hold it together without it stretching too much. I have a feeling it may well stretch with wearing. Mm. That's, what I, that's what I think anyway. So Okay, let's hear from one of the others. Um, do you want me to go next, Billy? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, what I've done, I think I described in the long way thread, I've sewn it together. Um, <clears throat> I've sewn the cardigan together at the side steams, but I've, I've still got to finish, finish the back. I'm nearly there. I've got a few more rows to go, but then I'm going to do the three needle bind off to attach it to the front. And um, I wasn't really sure about the depth of the arm side, um, mm. it, it might have needed an extra pattern repeat on it. Um, so I've left, uh, I've done the sleeves and I've sewn them up uh, properly as well. Um, but I've still to do the, the top of the arm because if I make, obviously if I put an extra pattern repeat on the, um, on here, I'm going to have to make somehow alter the, the top of the arm on the sleeve. Yeah. Yes. Do you know how to do that, Billy or George, <laughs> with your experience? <laughs> no. No, no, but there's a no, website, there's a blog called, I think, by Gum by Golly. Yeah, Maybe I've looked at that. that. Yeah, I need to look think, at it more closely. I think she talks about changing the shape. You know, I think yeah. on YouTube there must be some. Bio. Yeah, I've got it in some of my old books as well. So I'll have a look at it, but I've just not had a chance yet. So I've, I've sort of like quite a lot of it is finished. I just need to just try it on but I have actually tried it on and um, I sort of did some tacking stitches across the shoulders and I, and I think it's looking all right actually I might I might just try it as as, as the pattern suggests because that would make the sleeves an awful lot easier um but I'm pleased with the sleeves how they fit they're lovely <laughs> I, but, I'm impressed too I mean yeah they weren't kidding when they said if you follow the instructions it's going to be perfect yeah <laughs> Yours is a lovely colour on you, I have to say. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, it does suit you very well. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's it. So hopefully next time I shall be finished. <laughs> My yarn was such a bargain. Like, it's hard for me to shop retail now. <laughs> it's hard for me to pay, like, $120 for yarn when yeah. this extra fine merino. Yeah. The wheat cones. Here's my, my cones. They're hardly dwindled. I paid $45 for all of this. Hello. I'm going to have so much left over when I'm done this sweater. Oh, hello. Sorry. Nobody's in bed. Okay, at least one is not in bed yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, say hello. 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 <laughs> Um, yeah. Trying to remember the little bit of German. I know. Um, what does it mean? You get how you say it. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Sorry. Oh. But we speak English. English? Yes. Can you? <laughs> yes. Yes. I can. Yes, a little bit, maybe. Wow. <laughs> Better than my German. Oh, I know what no. saying. <laughs> he's actually going in a bilingual school and his uh, first year there, but he's supposed to understand English. Yeah, well, we're we're all speaking English, so if you want to listen, <laughs> you might be able yeah. to learn okay. a couple words. Okay, so <laughs> sit there and listen, but don't interfere. 
I think if one of the boys learns knitting, that will be success for the mother. <laughs> oh, I hope we have <laughs> higher aspirations than that. <laughs> 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 don't get me wrong knitting is great knitting is wonderful yeah. but i wouldn't be yeah, let, I'm, just joking. I'm joking because uh, they see me so often with my knitting and i hear often let just just let me finish this row i'm i'm, I'm there i'm there just, just give me a second i want to finish the row <laughs> okay sarah you are on yeah. Okay, so um, I have probably gotten the least done out of everybody, but I think it's a combination of having like so many things I end up doing that I didn't get the chance to touch on it. Right now I'm on Sleep Island, <laughs> as you so eloquently <laughs> named before. Um, I'm still doing it on two needles. I think at this point it's probably best to do it like that because I might end up taking way longer doing one by one. One thing that I didn't realize when I first started, and let me just put them together closely so you can see, is that it's like, this is an independent dye. The dye is slightly different. I'm not sure if you can tell, but this, the color for this sleeve is slightly lighter than this one. So I don't know if that's going to be a bit too apparent when I finally finish the sweater, but you know, I'm rolling with it. <laughs> well, it's better for that to be on the sleeve than right here. Yeah. <laughs> but you're, you're rotating the balls and alternating rows and all of that. So that's where my mistake is because it's my, only my second time using, um, you know, hand dyed yarns. So mm -hmm. I wasn't actually aware of that until after I looked, I said, hey, what's going on here? Then when I looked it up, I realized, oh, I'm supposed to be doing that. <laughs> so that's my mistake. <laughs> I knit a whole coat and I knew when I bought the yarn that, you know, it was an indie dyer, it wasn't commercially made. I knew that I was going to have to alternate. And even with my alternating, I have a line of demarcation. It really bothers me, but it's a coat. And I mean, I asked the company, could I send you my whole finished garment and would you dye the whole thing at once? And they said, yes, they would, which I thought oh. was very nice, Ooh. but I would be risking putting my coat in the mail. Maybe it mm -hmm. gets there. And then on the way back, maybe it gets to me. It was a lot of hours of my knitting. I just didn't want to take that chance. And they were going to charge me to, mm -hmm. you know, to <laughs> reply it. I mean, yeah. I no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, oh, I was like so surprised. You had said that you got the this yarn for like what was it, forty or eighty dollars? You must send me the website because I'm 40. spending like upwards of 120, 140. <laughs> forty five dollars, forty five dollars for these three, these three cottons. Uh, I mean, total. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, the problem is that they don't always have the colors that I might want. And some of their stuff is much more expensive. They do a lot of cashmere and then it's $45 per cone. Like mm -hmm. the next, an upcoming thing for me is going to have nine colors. One cone has like 2000 yards. I would have way, way, way too much. Uh, and anyway, like for this project, it was okay, but I can't always do that. Anyway, um, Let's see. I, I, the button bands. Has anybody else done button band? Who hasn't talked about it yet? Because I'm not there, and I might need pointers. Well, I, I bought some buttons. Um, I'll go and find them. They're not vintage, but I bought two lots just to decide which was best. So I'll just pop and get them and uh, bring them and show you. Okay, while she's gone, I'll talk about um, blocking mine. I had blocked the back and 
I, I'll take it off and show you. Um, I didn't really like what the blocking did. So I won't be doing that again. All right, while you were gone, I started to talk about blocking my back. So just give me a minute. Yep. Um, here's the back. I don't know if you're able to see that. Mm -hmm. I think it got to be pretty flat compared to this. Yeah. I think you probably can see the difference on screen. So mm -hmm. I think for the whole rest of my sweater, I'm not going to block it. I'm just going to steam it with like the steam coming out of my iron. I'm not going to press it. I'm just going to hold it in the air and let the steam hit it and see if it just relaxes out because I like the three dimensionality yeah. that is now lost probably forever in the back, but it's the back. So not everybody will see the back unless I turn around. So anyway, let's see those buttons. All right. This is the first one that I think I'm going to use. Let me see if I can get it. Hold it by the camera, please. Oh, yeah. cute. Yeah. yeah. They were very, 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 very cheap. <laughs> as were, I bought these glass ones as well, which are, I, I have difficulty finding the camera. Can you see those? Yeah. There's, they're not in my... focus. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Like a, a rose, like a flower? That's right. They're a rose. Ooh, but when they're actually on the cardigan, they disappear. So I think think that I'm going to use those. Oh, can't, I can't do it on yeah. top. Yeah. Um, yes. I, those yeah, are yeah. Up little orange specks. In, I because, think that looks really yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, I got 12 of each of those buttons and that cost me seven New Zealand dollars. I have no idea. Which is that. like, in English pounds, it's like three pounds 50. Okay, so I'm it, guessing. So I that is, My husband yeah, probably can do that conversion. He might know the exchange rate, but I'm guessing that that's maybe five or six US. Probably about the same in New Zealand dollars as American mm -hmm. dollars. Or, or less, maybe. Oh, so, yeah. So not a fortune. Oh, no, absolutely not. So um, I was spoiled for choice in the shop I went to. But hey, that's fine. So I'm happy with that, those orangey ones. And the other ones will go on a blouse that I'm making that will go with this, I think. So I'm good. Okay, so I have some other things that I want to talk about. The first thing is... Are we going to meet again or are we just going to finish on our own? Um, if we are going to meet again, I think we probably have to allow enough time so that most of us have a chance of being done. I don't think that I'll be done in two more weeks. I, I'm not convinced. I probably need a little more time than that. I don't, I don't know about the others. Well, Sarah, we know is... She's going to need. Yeah, definitely more than two weeks required. <laughs> so we might have to wrap up without you, but it depends on how much more time we, we give. Do we think three weeks that four out of five of us will be done? George for sure is going to be done. Oh, yeah. George is going to be done tonight. <laughs> 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 Well, say la vie. <laughs> what do we think? Meet again yeah. or don't meet again? Yeah, let's meet again. It would be nice to see George has finished. <laughs> yeah. right. be nice to see everybody and how they've yeah. got on with finishing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So do we think three weeks or two? 
I think perhaps two weeks is safe. And even if I don't finish, I like to see what people did with the shoulder pads. You know, I know the pattern called for those. I want to see how people seamed up their sweaters um, when they're finished up with their pieces too. So I think three weeks sounds nice. Shoulder yeah. pads. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> doing shoulder pads. <laughs> I've never done it before, so I'm so curious to see how to even attach it. <laughs> he finished. I don't know, knitting shoulder pads. <laughs> I know, there's like a little line at the bottom of the pattern, right? <laughs> no, Kenzo, I don't know about the rest of you. You're welcome to knit shoulder pads. <laughs> I don't think I, I have room. I think my sweater fits me like to a T. I don't think there'd be like enough room for even like a quarter of an inch shoulder mat. Yeah, I'm so curious so, to see because I was like, how would you even attach those? How would it come out looking? I mean, I have sh broad shoulders too. So I think perhaps I'll pass, <laughs> but I'm curious to see. <laughs> Wallace, what do you think? Shoulder pads? <laughs> Wallace is out there watching. She's always here. I'm so thankful that I have one loyal. <laughs> here, she's she's always here with us. I can't wait someday for her to make an appearance. Okay, so what did we decide? Two weeks or three weeks? Two for me. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm easy. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm easy either way. <laughs> yeah. But is two weeks realistic for the rest of us? Excluded. I think I can do in two weeks. I would you prefer th uh, three weeks to be sure that if I have to unravel and just, uh, but I think I can do also in two weeks okay. because I only have the two sleeves. All right, I'm good with three weeks. Yeah. That'll give Sarah a little bit of extra time and then I can actually like relax and maybe cast on something else. Shh. <laughs> Don't tell the knitting gods. Okay, so <laughs> three weeks. Um, figure out what that is okay next thing so i need downtime before i start another knit along but i have another knit along in mind and i <laughs> i don't want to put you on the spot you don't have to commit i'm just going to tell you about it and people out there watching may want to join the next time around because we've had fun right so Ooh, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to yeah. take myself off the screen because I have a picture there of what it is. So that is the little number that I am planning to do. Um, uh, I don't know if it's big. Do you see it large? Anybody? No. Well, is it no. on your screen or do you see a bunch of us still? No, it's a small square I see on mine. Hmm. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Perhaps you could share the screen and share a larger picture? Oh, I could pin it, maybe. How do I do that? I forget. Oh, it's fair, Al. Yeah, that should make it. That's cool. Okay, I think that is the trick. So, yes, it's fair, Al. It has nine different colors and it involves steaking. So I know for me, this is going to have challenges all around. I haven't done a lot of Fair Isle. I certainly have never done anything with nine colors. And oh, by the way, it's on a US one needle, 46 stitches in four inches. So if you do the math, that's 11 and a half stitches per inch. It's a very, very fine gauge. Mm -hmm. Although after this lace, I think it might even be faster. I can't be sure of that, but because it's sleeveless, I don't know. So I just think this is a very lovely vintage looking thing. The original sweater is in a museum in Shetland and Susan Crawford wrote a whole book about her Shetland, I think it's called the Vintage Shetland Project. Up yeah. until now, all of her patterns, I believe were only available through her books. 
but she is beginning to release some of her patterns individually. And she tells me that this pattern in the next few weeks will be sold as an individual pattern. So I'm kind of counting on that. Um, I don't know. What, does anybody else love it like I love it? I, I've got uh, the book actually. <laughs> so. Oh, have you? Yeah, have you got it, George? No, I haven't. I've got a lot of her books and I didn't yeah. meet her. Um, and she let me try on most of her samples, which are beautiful. Oh. Mm. Um, and I have had the first book since it was first released in 1972. Um, but that particular jersey that Bill is talking about, I don't like the style of it. I don't like those sleeves that are coming over the top of your arms. Um, as a vest, it would be great as a normal vest, but I've done a, a couple of vests. Um, I've got one Ferrar vest that was steeked as well, armholes and neck. Um, so for me personally, I wouldn't do that one. Okay. Wouldn't join in, so oh. there. I could see a lot of potential with that one. Uh, for some reason, it's making me think about I don't know if the, the was the, if this type of shirt is called the shiki, you know, like the colorful like African prints, and then I could see like having a little um, maybe a little tie, maybe using a crochet to wrap around to like cinch in the waist. I could see potential in that one. I've never done sticking before, so that's a challenge I think I do want to undertake. And then use it fair out too. I've never used it done fair out before, so that would definitely be a challenge. <laughs> I think that would be. Take it. it could be a very interesting. Um, adaptation if you wanted to get some kind of an African pattern and yeah. to not use her charts, but I, I think her charts would be nice. Maybe I'll change the color, of course, because color is in my uh, wheelhouse here. But yeah. Colors, yeah. Well, yeah. That's fun, actually. Oh, I'm definitely changing the colors. <laughs> I mean, I already, I already picked out my colors. There's not a lot of yarns. It's a lace weight yarn. There's not, I haven't been able to find, I should say, a lot of yarns that are that weight that come in a wide variety of colors. Because to choose nine that I like that are going to work together, is it? I can tell you how many hours I've labored over this. But is, I, it, des is it described as a two ply jumper weight, the yarn? I don't, I don't know because I don't have the pattern yet. I think it's the, so the I don't Shetland, know if she's calling it. The Shetland two ply jump away is actually a four ply a fingering. It's not lace weight. Let me just tell you, it's 11 and a half stitches per inch. Oh gosh. Oh, that is my yeah, yeah. number yeah, one you're... needle. So I don't think it's two ply, four ply. I don't yeah. think it's any of that. It's, oh, it's she's got thin. Now she yeah. has in the past sold a kit. I don't know if she's going to be offering the kit, but it's her colors and I don't really want those colors. And what I read about other people who bought the kit, it's her yarn that she had done for this was silk. And people were saying like in the steaking, it was hard to, you know, control because it's so slippery. I it's so so yeah. I'm definitely not doing silk, but I think any yarn that's going to be that fine is going to have really good weight. And I've never steeped before, so I think having wool will be essential for me because mm -hmm. all the little stitches, yeah. I like. I've gotten pretty good at picking up, like you know, Sarah's got one sleeve that she's continuing on with and she's holding the other stitches on her needle I would have just yanked that whole thing off because <laughs> because no because I'm adept now at picking up all these tiny little stitches no problem if I had to rip back I would just pull the needle out rip it back and then pick up but with that I think it's like over 450 stitches because it's knit in the round and because you only want to be knitting, you don't want to be doing the rear side. Yeah. 
it's just easy. Also, right? with with finding yarn for speaking, you need to find pure wool because that will felt when it's steeped. Mm. Yeah, which is good. And you do not want superwash. You don't want to want a, a machine washable wool because that's been treated and it won't stick. You need a sticky yarn. So, mm. which is why they use the pure Shetland for doing these. Yeah. Uh, well, she uh, I've, silk. Yeah. The, one, the one that you saw, that's silk. Oh, I wouldn't do it. No. I, wouldn't I don't know if it was 100% silk. Maybe. Yes, maybe, it is. But, I've got I've got the book here, Billy. Oh, you have the book. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, oh. it, it is 100% silk and it's um, um, 750 meters per 100 grams is the pattern. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I think you could use Jameson's though, don't you think, George? I think you could use Jameson's. I would have thought, yeah, you know. I would think the Jameson's. Um, they do a two ply lace weight, don't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not sure of the colours in that. If they no. have the, the huge range of colours. Yeah, yeah. But even yeah, their heritage is very fine, isn't it? I've never bought Jameson's, but I've seen they. Uh, one of the shops in Brooklyn, Sarah sells the Jameson's yarns and they come in small small yes so that you yeah, can get and, it, color work. and it's very inexpensive comparatively very inexpensive yes. oh also. Well, that might be a, a thing for me to consider although I picked out all these gorgeous colors already but I don't really? know quantities so oh maybe you'll yeah def I'll definitely look up this brand yeah because once you talk starts with the wool I didn't know what the measurement would look like or where to actually pick it up before I've only really bought yarns, I frequented um, Neighborhood Fiber Co, but their selection is not too, not large at all. So that's good to know. Jameson's wool, no problem. <laughs> well, plug for local yarn shop for New York. Um, I think it's Brooklyn General that has Jameson's. Oh, yeah. Thank you for the information, Brooklyn General. Yeah, or, or the, the Woolly Thistle's got it as well, the online Woolly Thistle. Mm -hmm. I think they're in Maine or something. Woolly Thistle. Thank you guys for the recommendation. Yeah. Okay, so um, I, I don't know if there's any takers here. It doesn't sound like anybody's... I, I'm interested. I, I'm interested what? in it. No, okay. I wouldn't wear it for myself, but because I've my too busty for that design. But I think my sister, it would be nice. My sister, I might knit it for my sister. Yeah, that's so, a uh, very devoted, loving sister. Because I, <laughs> I think it is work. I'm not, I'm not ready to tackle it after this. So yeah. I, I definitely want some downtime. I was thinking like mid July. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it'd be perfect. So anybody out there who's seeing this between now and July 15th, hopefully hundreds, if not thousands, can I like wish for that, of people will watch this video and maybe some people will decide to join in. So if you're out there on YouTube watching, I will put in the show notes how to find us. Um, first stop would be to go to the Ravelry group called Show and Tell. And... Another way on Ravelry is to go into their community tab. At the bottom of the drop down menu, they have a, a, another tab that's called events. And if you scroll down through the calendar of events to July 15th, I have already put something there. So it'll be similar to this. We'll Zoom because it seems like a really fun thing to do. Um, and I think it's really supportive. I, I think yeah. you know, we're all at different levels and I think mm -hmm. um, different people have different areas of expertise. So it's kind of like five minds are better than one. I think it's been really interesting. I don't know how this would be with many, many, many people, but I'm not worried about it because I don't think that hundreds of people are gonna say, oh, I wanna knit something that's 11 and a half stitches per inch. I don't even own a size one round needle. I have size one straight, but this is knit in the round. I'm gonna to have to buy, I mean, I have needles of every size interchangeable, but I'm gonna to have to get new needles for this. So I know that not everybody's gonna be lining up to do this. Okay, um, but hopefully some people will want to and will join us. Um, 
Yeah, definitely. And for the needle size, actually, um, because I do have size zeros and size ones US. It's for a Taigu set too, but you have to get, I think they call them minis. So it's a whole different cord <laughs> that you need to get for it as well. Yeah. yeah. Right, but it's sold as a set. I don't yeah. think I want to buy that whole set. I bought it individually. I um, There's a store called Jimmy Bean's Wool that sells individually. So that's how I managed to pick up my zero and ones because I was knitting. But a, not interchangeable. They're, yeah, they're interchangeable. It's interchangeable just the ones? Yes, yes. You can buy the cord and then uh, the needle separately. So Jimmy Bean's Wool is the website that I use to get it. Okay, I'll look at that. I'm not sure that I need it to be interchangeable, but maybe if I was ever going to do something on zeros, I, uh, I think after two, I'm kind of crazy to go to a one, but... <laughs> You know, I don't know about the rest of you because none of you live in Manhattan. My entire closet is about five feet by five feet. That's it. It's a walk-in closet. So I have a hanging space that's only about four feet wide. I have other closets like coat closet and so forth, but, and I have shelving on the side of my closet. So my sweaters are on the shelf, but the shelf is starting to be overloaded and there's nothing there that I want to get rid of. So yes. if I knit a sweater a month, I don't have room for 12 more sweaters. And if I knit a sweater a month for the next four years, I don't have room for 48 sweaters. So I think if I knit things that are really challenging and really thin, <laughs> it'll like occupy me for a longer time and I love to knit I just don't want to have a lot of output yeah, yeah I don't know if anybody else feels that way but comment below like if space is a factor in your knitting <laughs> it's not only space though it's just what do you do with all these jumpers and you don't get a chance to wear them well it seems a waste too. you know that too, like I wonder if people will comment about that because it's an interesting conundrum. Mm. Um, I, I'm sure there are people who give things away, give things to charity. I know there's a woman in this building 30 years ago when I used to go to a knitting shop. Um, this was before I took a 25 year hiatus. I would run into her on occasion. I didn't know her before, but she lived in my apartment building. So I would see her, I didn't know she was this knitter really good knitter, expert knitter. Um, she stopped knitting for herself. I think she just reached the limit of what she needed, what she could wear. And now she knits for charity. So I think she's not knitting sweaters. She's probably knitting hats and scarves and things, but just so she can keep knitting, knitting, knitting. And she has probably leftover yarns. Um, but I'm charitable, but not in that way. No, I would not want to invest a hundred hours of my time to give something away. I'd rather give money than time. Anyway, anything else before we leave? Check the um, show and tell group for information about the next uh, Zoom. And put your pictures there, please. If you're on Instagram and you feel like hashtag Sirdar Chevron, you could put some things there. You'll see that I put one thing there, but that would be another touch point. Um, I think that's, that's all I have. Anybody else want to chime in before we say goodbye? No. Okay. I must say I've really enjoyed this, you know, oh, joining. Well, I hope we'll see you again. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice yeah. to meet you in case you're not coming back. But come back. Come back and show us your finished thing, at least. I mean, even if you don't want to stay on the whole call, just want to see, like, how, it, how it's done. Yeah. And it's done and with the buttons and everything. All right, yeah. gang. Nice to see you again. Yeah, until next time. Bye. 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 Bye.